Hello, welcome to this little help video for the Mindfield eSense skin response sensor and I will address in this video all known issues that could appear when you try to operate this sensor. First of all, of course, you need a smartphone or a tablet to use the eSense skin response. No other mobile PC is compatible, so you need a mobile, no Windows, no Mac, you need a mobile device for Android and for iOS. Both is possible. We recommend iOS a little bit more over Android because it gives a very nice long-term support of the latest iOS versions. So even an old device like an iPhone 7 we are here have here as a test device is still capable of running the near latest iOS 15 here in this case. iOS 16 is latest but still works very well with the eSense app and its seven-year-old device. Um, an iPad is my personal uh, recommendation to use with the eSense. I show you why, um, because uh, this is my iPad mini screen here running an eSense skin response. And you see on that screen you have the bar chart, video numeric values, uh, the chart line, uh, everything else accumulated into one page view. So on a smartphone you have a much smaller screen, you have to swipe in between different views in horizontal view and with a tablet it works much nicer in this case with the iPad. The iPad mini is a good recommendation especially also in terms of price and um, it still has a 3.5 millimeter input uh, on older versions. So let's talk about that, how to connect the eSense skin response now to your smartphone and tablet. It has a 3.5 millimeter jack and um, this is an audio jack and um, many devices, even older ones, do not have an input anymore for that. So even this old iPhone 7 um, from seven years old does not have any input for that. So how to connect it? Luckily it works really nice with such tiny adapters. This is the original Apple Lightning 23.5 millimeter adapter and you can plug in the eSense there and then just plug in the adapter here at the bottom to the iPhone, okay? So nothing else to do in the app is automatically recognize that you have connected a microphone um, because the eSense acts like a microphone, gets the power from that and um, provides and, and um, submits the data to the microphone. Is then decoded by our app. So. Um, you need this tiny adapter for um, newer versions of iPhones and iPads. There is the same version as USB-C. USB-C to 3.5 millimeter audio adapter costs around 10 euros, 10 dollars. Is available on Amazon and on our product page we have a direct link to that. Um, and now let's have a look at Android. Even for Android it's this nearly the same situation. Uh, here we have a test device, it's a Google Pixel 2 XL, also around seven, six, seven years old. It also does not have a 3.5 millimeter input anymore, so it has USB-C and so you need a USB-C adapter. Um, here are two adapters that we have tested, we have tested also some more, but these are uh, direct links on our website to Amazon for them. Uh, they cost the same below 10 euros or dollars. Uh, you can also now um, include such an adapter when ordering an eSense from our shop. Then you can choose that you need such an adapter in addition. It is not part of the default delivery content because many people already have such an adapter for their headsets and headphones they're uh, still using with it and where the 3.5 millimeter jack is very common still today. Uh, so yes, you need such an adapter. Um, it's important for Android. If you have another type, um, check if it has a DAC chip, D-A-C, um, that's needed or just go by the recommend, recommended adapter that we uh, have tested and that we um, write on our help desk and product pages. So that's a good point. Let's have a look at our help desk. It's available online and it's the website for all the information about the eSense. It's help.minefield.de and it's available completely in English. 
and also other languages, Spanish and Hungarian at the moment, and we will add more languages soon um, and regularly. So uh, for the eSense skin response, but also for the other eSense, you find all the information needed for operation, for using the app and all details, doing a good biofeedback training, etc. And um, here you can have a look in general at um, the delivery content and also the compatible Android and iOS devices. So um, please check once you have uh, looked at if you need an adapter uh, and got such an adapter, please check if your iOS and Android device is compatible. Uh, we have listed some good recommendations here. We have, uh, um, have here a list of uh, compatible iOS devices and some annotations for that. For Android devices, um, normally we can say all Android devices running Android 10 at the moment are compatible. And um, also we have some recommendations and some small white lists here of tested devices. But it's nearly 99% of the Android devices that work well with the eSense, with or without adapter, depending on the device. Yeah, just have a look and see if your Android and iOS is updated to the latest version. So please check if you have the latest version that is available for your device installed. From year to year, there's a new iOS and Android version. And unfortunately, also, we have to increase the minimum version from time to time as we are forced to do that as app developer uh, and as support for older versions of Android and iOS um, will be discontinued from time to time. And so, um, yeah, it is an ongoing process and we update and maintain our eSense app regularly. So you will have also updates of the eSense app in the Play Store or Apple App Store. So please check as well if you have installed the latest eSense app version available from there. So once you have checked that you have an Android and iOS device that you can connect to the eSense with or without adapter, check what Android and iOS version you have and see if that version is okay and compatible with the eSense app by checking in the help desk here uh, on our website or on our product page, uh, our shop page, it's, it's everywhere listed this information, what device you need. So after talking about adapters and devices, now let's see how you connect the other side of the eSense to your hand for a good measurement. We include, uh, we have a different type of electrodes and for that I go back to the help desk and look at electrode types here where you can see that we have these Velcro electrodes which are our basic standard electrodes that work for most people but not for everybody. It's included in standard delivery with the eSense skin response and there is an additional eSense skin response set with some more electrodes uh, and this is with comes with finger clips and it comes with these disposable gel electrodes. And these disposable gel electrodes are our top recommendation, especially for professional use. Every professional user is going for this gel electrodes as it provides the best measurements. And um, with this additional gel, you have a very defined um, amount. And even for very dry skin, you get good results. Because how can you say electrodes are, can be used or not? You look at the values that you measure, and if they're really tiny, and tiny means around one microsiemens, one, two, or below one microsiemens, you even get a notice from the app saying contact loss, uh, please, please improve your contact. Um, then this is a clear sign that you will need this disposable gel electrodes to use with the eSense. So if you have two tiny values, check the electrodes, check the electrode connection, of course, to your skin and check the possible positions. Um, this is another article here, possible electrode positions. Uh, you have some images how to place the Velcro electrodes. That's pretty clear, I think. For the gel electrodes, you have three different positions at your hand um, that are equally, can be used just what you prefer, try them. And the finger clips just clip the finger tips like this. Uh, and it's pretty easy to do. So um, check the different types of electrodes and electrode positions when you connect the eSense and then you're good to go. Okay, what else could happen when you start and install the eSense app for the first time? There are a few permission requests that you have to accept 
to make the app working. When you deny such a request, for example, to have access to the microphone, then the app cannot operate. And when you start a measurement or training, you will just get nothing at all, no input, and the app is like frozen. So please check if you have allowed all and granted all permissions the app needs. Um, you can check that also afterwards if you accidentally declined one permission, then go to settings of Android and iOS. It's an, under data privacy or under app permissions um, of the eSense app and other apps as well. Works the same way. You can see all the permissions this app needs and if they are all active and allowed and also even in the background and when running low on battery so please allow all the permissions the app needs to work properly otherwise it cannot operate well and finally what else could happen now um, in the end um, if you see when starting a measurement a highly fluctuating strange values going up and down like thousands of in, in numbers of thousands and it's really a chaos then this is a clear sign that the eSense sensor is not properly detected. Under iOS, this normally does not happen because we know and tested all the generations of iPhones and iPads that are perfectly compatible with the adapter maybe needed with our eSense. Um, so this normally can only happen on Android. And under Android, there may be some devices um, as there are hundreds and thousands of different Android devices that have a very strange microphone input that is not compatible with the eSense, not delivering enough power to the eSense, or just not, not working well. And then this normally results in such a strange fluctuating signal. And if you pull out the eSense from the device, it should look still look the same. It looks the same if no eSense is connected at all, or it's plugged in and still fluctuating that way, then the eSense is not detected and not working properly. What can you do now? Please try the eSense with at least one other smartphone or tablet preferred with an Apple device where we know it works for sure. Test it maybe also with other electrodes. Maybe it's a very rare case that an electrode is broken and um, delivers then no contact at all. Um, or check it with another person. Yeah. So test another device is the most important thing to find out if this is just the device or it's maybe a defect with the eSense. So test at least one other device, maybe two if you have from friends and family, and test other electrodes and another person. Okay, so this is it. Um, that's what to say for the eSense. Have a look at our help desk. It's really um, a lot of articles here, a lot of help for understanding eSense in general, the app, biofeedback in general, the procedures, etc. cetera. Um, you even have Again, um, an FAQ and troubleshooting here, where we have also these questions, what can you do when you have very small values or when it's fluctuating, is that everything what I explained just a minute ago, okay? So this is it for the eSense skin response. Most of what I said when connecting the eSense also applies to eSense temperature and eSense respiration that also uses the skin response as a sensor. And um, yeah. I hope you enjoy the eSense, have good measurements, good trainings, good results, and have a look at all the other videos in our YouTube channel about the eSense as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.